Now, I've talked a lot about how I think that in the time between May the 1st, when the uh, uh, Trump slash Khalil Zad negotiated uh, peace deal with the Taliban, stated that the U.S. should be out, you know, their final date, May the 1st, um, and the date that Joe Biden has arbitrarily decided to set to pull out of Afghanistan, September the 11th, um, that there may be uh, some issues uh, where, that could be used at, um, as a predicate uh, for extending the pullout date well past September 11th and keeping uh, the U.S. in Afghanistan uh, perpetually moving forward. And I won't get into the details of that here, but it's pretty easy um, to figure out that, well, if they have a deal with the Taliban, that the Taliban will not attack uh, and engage in warfare, uh, in, you know, um, as a part of this deal. And the U.S.'s side of the deal is, okay, we have to be out by May 1st. Well, that if the U.S. stays past May 1st, the deal is dead. That's the basic thesis there. And then, um, uh, you know, essentially, uh, by extending the date to September 11th, the U.S. may be trying to bait the Taliban uh, into uh, attacking them. And from that point, the military industrial complex uh, and the entire fo bipartisan foreign policy consensus will say, we can't leave Afghanistan. This is, you know, this would be too crushing and embarrassing. You know, the U.S. must stand, in, stand its ground and fight. But even if the Taliban is smart and doesn't take the bait, which they very well might not, um, because I think that, you know, the Taliban probably, you know, figured that out immediately when Biden said, nope, I'm not going to pull out May 1st. I'm going to pull out September 11th. He's just, you know, he's purposefully breaking the deal for no apparent reason um, just to bait them into attacking. And so if the Taliban um, plays nice in the sandbox and doesn't take the bait, uh, even then. I'm afraid that uh, this whole this whole pullout of U.S. troops from Afghanistan uh, may very well be a sham, and that's because I, I woke up this morning and uh, opened up antiwar.com as I often do uh, on mornings. Uh, you know, antiwar and zero hedge are kind of where the two places I check. I try and check, you know, what's going on with the wars and what's going on with, uh, you know, our phony economy. And I woke up to a story uh, where the headline was Iraq PM. Uh, you know, making progress on U.S. troop withdrawals. And I thought, huh, is this a throwback story? Could this be from, you know, 10 years ago or 11 years ago? Because the U.S., I remember very clearly, I watched Geraldo Rivera, uh, you know, stand there at the border um, as the last, you know, uh, as the last uh, MRAPs and Humvees crossed out of Iraq and they were carrying the last of U.S. troops. And he said, yep, there it is. That's it. The end of the Iraq war. America's out of, Af er, out of Iraq. Uh, it's finally over. Uh, but lo and behold, that story was from today. Uh, the prime minister of Iraq is still trying to work with the U.S. to get them to leave his country. Ten years after the supposed pullout and the end of the war in Iraq, uh, 11 years now, uh, U.S. troops are still stationed in Iraq, and the Iraqi people clearly still do not want the U.S. They did not welcome us as liberators. They do not um, uh, continue to house us as liberators. And so just because uh, the U.S. says it's going to pull out of a country doesn't mean that it will. I mean, the only country that the U.S. has ever pulled out of, actually, uh, was Vietnam. Think about that. We're still in Germany even, you know, however many generations after World War II. I mean, the last of the World War II vets, you know, the young 17-year-old guys who lied on their application just so that they could join the war in 1945, who were just barely, you know, on the age cusp of being considered World War II veterans. Those guys are barely still alive. There's only a few of them. And yet, <laughs> the U.S. is still, it still has troops in Germany. And of course, the same with Japan. And the same with all these other places. Same with Korea. And so even if the war ends in name, uh, you know, the troops stayed in Iraq and the troops probably are going to stay in Afghanistan. I highly doubt uh, that Joe Biden is capable. Um, you know, not even, you know, Trump wasn't capable of this either, as he proved in Syria. I mean, Trump couldn't even pull the troops out of Syria. That really, that really shows it. I mean, Syria, we supposedly never even went to war in Syria. And somehow, uh, you know, troops were not supposed to be in Syria. And yet we can't even get uh, the last bit of those troops out. So who in their right mind thinks 
that at this point we're going to be getting the troops out of Afghanistan. Even the U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken, you know, the guy who's supposed to be Mr. Diplomacy, not Mr. War, um, is coming out and saying, well, even after we pull the troops out, well, I mean, the U.S. is still going to operate in Afghanistan. I mean, that's our, uh, you know, that's our very basic right as, you know, as uh, the world empire. Uh, nobody can stop us from sending our troops into Afghanistan if we want to on, you know, whatever, for whatever occasion, um, just because we're going to supposedly pull the troops out. That doesn't mean squat. Now, in the end, will all this matter? Um, not really. You know, the, uh, the benefit that Barack Obama got, you know, the credit he got for pulling the troops out of Iraq uh, was very short-lived because people very quickly realized uh, that these things go on forever. There is no ending it, uh, and a lot of people didn't really care that much to begin with. The hatred for the Iraq War um, on the part of the left was not so much about the war itself. It was about hating George W. Bush, and once Bush got out, it was very clear that the, the anti-war movement was dead. Um, you know, and even now, do people support the war in Afghanistan? No. Do they support the mission of the troops and all that? No. People, people don't care about it. but because they don't care, they also don't care that much if they end up staying. And that's why I, I've said in the past, and I'll say it again, uh, the troops will stay in Afghanistan until uh, their checks stop, ca you know, stop clearing the bank, until that wire transfer um, from the Pentagon uh, stops showing up uh, over, you know, over there for them to continue, uh, you know, buying whatever supplies they need. Um, until the ships stop showing up with new supplies. That's the only way that the wars um, in the Middle East or wherever else, Africa, which we don't, I mean, nobody ever talks about the U.S. wars in Africa, um, until, those will not end until uh, the U.S. is uh, completely uh, dissolved, bankrupt, whatever you want to say. The U.S. will not gracefully retreat the way that the Soviet Union was forced to over a number of years. Uh, you know, the Soviets first pulled out of Afghanistan. They said, you know what, we're not winning this. Let's stop wasting our time. Then, uh, slowly, Gorbachev loosened his grip on the captive nations, as Reagan liked to call them, uh, the non-Soviet republics who were members of the Warsaw Pact um, and were, you know, sort of uh, gripped by communism. He allowed them to transition to a uh, more moderate and ultimately, uh, you know, liberal democratic system. Uh, you know, you saw the fall of the Berlin Wall, um, uh, Poland, uh, you know, electing uh, uh, that labor union guy who uh, was, you know, very anti-Soviet. Uh, you saw the barbed wire between Hungary and, and, and Austria uh, get, you know, get snipped and people start walking between the two countries, um, you know, for the first time in a long time. Of course, Austria and Hungary used to be for, you know, uh, centuries, I think, united. All of this happened before the collapse of the Soviet Union. Uh, Gorbachev was, you know, was retreating and trying to, you know, uh, build up and, and preserve the Soviet system at home, um, but ultimately couldn't do that. The United States, in our, in our, um, is going to go out with a bang. Our elites don't care enough about uh, saving the domestic system, or I should say, they're too arrogant um, to understand that it's under threat, and so they will not make these concessions when it comes to foreign policy. Uh, because they don't feel like they need to. Uh, Gorbachev was willing to, to preserve uh, Soviet communism in Russia. Uh, he was willing to let go of Soviet communism in Poland and Germany. But the Blinkens of the world, you know, the uh, Hillary Clintons of the world, uh, the John Kerrys of the world, they're not willing to let go of, you know, quote-unquote American democracy in Afghanistan. Um, you know, to save, uh, you know, supposed American democracy in America. They think that they are the most powerful people in the world and that that will never change no matter how many bad decisions they make and how many times they screw up and, and how much of our wealth and treasure they squander. And so ultimately it always comes back to the impending financial collapse of the United States, which the Federal Reserve has been uh, both uh, adding to, um, uh, you know, making worse, but also delaying uh, for a decade now. Or if you really want to think about how long they've been making the situation worse, it's been since they were founded over 100 years ago. But as far as impending doom is concerned, 
uh, the Fed sort of headed it off at the pass back in 2008 and has been kicking down the can, you know, kicking the can down the road ever since. And ultimately, um, the longer they do that, the worse the ultimate crash will be, and the more likely it will be to take down the entire American system. So on that note, I will end it there for today.